guys' names tomorrow. I thought I would talk about those three little words that we all long to hear. But for some of us, sometimes it's hard to say. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> and so today I want to talk about forgiveness. And obviously connected to our concept or our theme of, of prayer. As uh, this is what we're, we're focusing on. So let's look at a definition of uh, forgiveness according to Webster's Dictionary. To cease to feel resentment against on account of wrong, commi wrong committed, to absolve, to pardon. Uh, according to Barnes' notes on the Bible, uh, to forgive is to treat as though the offense was not committed, to declare we will not harbor malice or treat unkindly, but that the matter shall be buried and forgotten. So there's a couple of definitions related to uh, forgiveness. Now, I have had to say in the past, I'm sorry, <laughs> ask for forgiveness. And I think that people have forgiven me, so I, I, at least I believe that to be true, and if they haven't, then it's not my issue, but I've asked for it. Um, <laughs> I have, in the past, um, you know, I've asked my wife for forgiveness, and I remember early on in our relationship, don't you like that, Rebecca? I thought you would appreciate that. Uh, in a, early on in our relationship, uh, I decided that I would never give flowers when I was sorry, just because I thought I always wanted the token to be uh, affection and for our love and not something that I would come to her with uh, some kind of flowers and say, okay, I messed up, here you go. Um, <laughs> so I, you know, if, if that was the case, then I would be broke anyways. But, um, <laughs> so we've always decided not, or I've decided not to, uh, as far as my own expression of uh, in our relationship, not to equate flowers with a sign of an apology in our relationship. Now, looking at these terms here with regard to uh, providing forgiveness to others, I like to think that I was able to accomplish these different terms that we see, you know, to pardon somebody, to absolve them, to treat them as the offense was never committed. Um, maybe I have, maybe I have, have it. Some senses might be a little easier to do that than others, but uh, that's what we're going to look at tonight. We're going to look at this idea of forgiveness related to prayer, and we're going to look at three ideas. One, praying for forgiveness of sins, uh, of our sins, praying for forgiveness of, uh, or part of praying to uh, uh, Forgiveness of others is part of our praying. And lastly, we look at receiving the rewards that a, a prayer uh, has for us with regard to forgiveness. So the first one, as you can see here, praying for forgiveness of our sin. And all throughout the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, we see scriptures related to the idea that uh, we have a sinful nature and that we are sinners. So in Psalms 51, 5, Behold, I was shaped uh, in iniquity and, and, and sin my mother did conceive me. Ecclesiastes 7, 20, uh, for there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good, and sinneth so not. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And mm -hmm. 1 John 1, 1.8, uh, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So obviously we have a path that shows uh, that we have a sinful nature. And so you know, the idea is that we're going to have to, at some point, confess those sins if we're going to uh, seek for forgiveness. Right. And mm -hmm. in Psalms 51, uh, we see the prayer for cleansing and pardon. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto, unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So that's quite a prayer of cleansing and pardoning. Uh, that we see in, in Psalms 51. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at this here, we know that a lot of us will start our journey with regard to re repentance in Acts 2.38. And so that is quite the life starting instructions that we see there for repenting. But we know it's not the end of it. So that's right. just the start. So that mm -hmm. journey, that turning around, mm -hmm. the idea is that we're going to have to go often, as Sister Stewart talks about here, that we know it's a daily commitment of going to prayer. Uh, and for some of us, with regard to forgiveness, it might not just be on a daily basis that we're trying to accomplish that, it may be hourly, or even at smaller increments <laughs> that uh, need to go along. I, I, I do feel that in my own prayer, praying, uh, that I do have that, uh, when I go to pray, that that's on my mind, is asking for that forgiveness and cleansing uh, as part of my prayer ritual. Uh, so what are we asking for uh, forgiveness? We're asking for forgiveness for trespasses, our wrongdoings, iniquities, and, and our sins. Right. So now that we've looked at this idea of praying for forgiveness of our sins, let's go into the forgiveness of others as part of our praying. This is really an important part. Yeah. So, uh, 
one place that came up that was pretty important, I thought, was in the Lord's Prayer that we see in Matthew 6, 12. So this is Jesus himself giving us instruction with regard to uh, praying and forgiveness of others. And forgive us our debts or our sins as we forgive our debtors or those who have sinned against us. And then further on, after the Lord's Prayer, he continues on to exalt more about this idea of forgiveness. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Mm -hmm. So those are some strong words uh, as far as the condition that's there with regard to expecting uh, you know, God to forgive us of our sins if we don't have that willingness of heart to forgive others of right. their trespasses against us. In a different passage, Jesus provides another example of praying and forgiving others. This is in Mark 11, 25, 26. Sister Stewart gave us in verse 24 that was just before that. That just talks about prayer, believing, and receiving. Uh, so we pick up here after that. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have an ought against any. Or forgive whatever you ask against anyone. Or forgive whatever you have against anyone. That your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses or sins. Right. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses or sins. So here we have two examples of uh, Jesus telling us specifically about in that prayer process that there needs to be not only asking for our own forgiveness but the, the willingness of us to uh, to forgive those that may have wronged us somehow mm -hmm. in a variety of different ways. So the question is, are we supposed to be waiting here for the person to come to me, or you, to apologize, maybe bring you those flowers, because that's what you expect with an apology. <laughs> um, but this is not, this, in these scriptures we don't see that to be the case. The case is that we're the ones who are supposed to take the, take the action. Right. We, you know, we're, we have been offended that we're not waiting for the offender to come to us to, to ask for the apology or to, to, the, to provide forgiveness. So uh, it's, it's on our action, and this is what uh, we're expected to do. Uh, and the, the condition of this, as you can see, is pretty strong with regard to if we don't take that initiative to forgive others uh, for their trespasses against us. As it said in verse uh, Mark 11 and 26, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive right. you of your trespasses. So uh, two examples from our teacher, Jesus, who provides us ways of uh, thinking about prayer and a mm -hmm. pretty important component not to th uh, forget about when yes. we're looking at right. uh, developing that uh, process of praying. That's right. So uh, in this uh, example that we have from Gil's exposition of the uh, entire Bible, it says that those who have offended or done injuries to us, either by word or deed, the injuries of enemies, the unkindness of friends, all sorts of offenses are to be forgiven by us. So that's our, part of our responsibility. And uh, we, we see a couple of examples here that I thought, you know, if I'm asking to, you know, to forgive others from what they, the wrongdoing that I feel that has been done to me, for some situation that you may think, boy, that's really challenging to do for, you know, who were they to do whatever it was they, that they did. Um, I thought these were two great examples of, like, okay, here, if I think it's challenging, these would be two challenging examples that we see where somebody overcame uh, and still was able to forgive. So we see Stephen when he was being stoned to death, right. that he was able to forgive those that were throwing rocks at him. And basically, you know, forgiving his murderers and Jesus, the same thing. Uh, forgiving those for that if they, they knew not what they did. And so we're able to ask that uh, uh, forgiveness of those who are persecuting them. So you see these words again? To pardon, treat us as uh, the offense was not committed, to absolve. Um, hopefully that we can get to a point where in our own uh, forgiveness of others that these are really not just words of them, but really in our heart. Because if it's in our heart or not in our heart, God's going to know. Uh, mm -hmm. with regard to what's there. So obviously uh, we're not going to hide it as Sister Stewart said. He's going he's to be able to see what's in the heart. So our goal is mm -hmm. not to try to fool ourselves but to make sure that we have it right uh, with our brother, Brother Ray. Mm -hmm. And if we expect the mercy of God to forgive us then we have to have that heart uh, where we forgive others. And in Matthew 5 and 7 uh, we see Blessed are they Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And in Matthew 18, 33, from the, uh, another translation, certain you have mercy on your fellow servant, just as I have mercy on you. That's mm -hmm. from the parable, uh, where the, the servant uh, was forgiven of his sins or his debts, and then later on didn't forgive his, uh, his own servant. So uh, there's an expectation that if we're expecting our Heavenly Father to forgive us, that we also can turn around and provide that same kind of uh, application to others. 
So our, the third idea here surrounding uh, forgiveness and sin and prayer is receiving the rewards of forgiveness. And obviously we can start looking at all kinds of different rewards uh, with regard to this. So I just have a few here that I've listed. The cl uh, receiving forgiveness pro uh, provides cleansing. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of right. our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, receiving forgiveness also uh, provides redemption. Uh, Ephesians 1 7, in whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Mm -hmm. uh, we also are blessed in a variety of places. We see this in Psalm 32 1, which is a great uh, psalm to so read the whole entire psalm, but we just don't have time to do that. that but it's mm -hmm. really a great, uh, a great psalm to so read regarding this topic here. Uh, but the idea is, for blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sins is covered. Uh, in Romans 4 7 and 8. Uh, blessed are they, uh, this is 4 7, blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, uh, whose sins are covered. And mm -hmm. Romans 4 8, blessed is the man whose sin uh, the Lord will never count against him. Mm -hmm. and lastly, uh, eternal life, as far as reward for forgiveness, and we should all know this one here. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm. So in closing, as you can see, uh, the prayer process involves us asking for our own forgiveness of sins, being willing to pray and forgive others for the debts and transgressions that they have against us, and lastly, the rewards that we just talked about yeah. are going to be there for us. Mm. So in closing, this quote here, an anonymous quote, and it says, he that cannot forgive others breaks down the bridge over which he must pass himself, where everyone has need to be forgiven. That's right. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.